guys, my name is Courtney Budson and this is What's For Din. Today I am super excited to share with you a pumpkin cheesecake recipe that will knock your socks off. This is absolutely beyond delicious, it has the texture of an amazing light fluffy cheesecake and all the great flavors of a pumpkin pie. I know making a cheesecake is a little bit intimidating, but trust me when I tell you that this is really easy to put together. Even though it has quite a few ingredients, it's literally just throwing everything in a bowl and mixing it together, and you will absolutely impress everyone that you give a slice of this to, and they will be asking for seconds. So you're gonna need some softened cream cheese. You're also gonna need brown sugar, granulated sugar, egg yolks and eggs. You're also gonna need some vanilla extract, flour, some pumpkin spice, and a little bit of salt. You're also gonna need 100% pure pumpkin puree, not the pumpkin pie filling, it's totally different. And then for the crust, is real simple. You're just gonna need some graham cracker crumbs, some granulated sugar, and a little bit of butter. So the first thing we wanna do is get our graham cracker crust prepared, because we have to throw it in the oven and pre-bake it, otherwise it can create a soggy crust. So all I'm gonna do is combine our crumbs with the sugar, and in the meantime, make sure your oven is preheating to 350 degrees. Okay, and now we're gonna add our melted butter and mix this until you get a wet sand-like texture. Okay, that's what it should look like. You should be able to press on it and then it stick together just like that. So that's what you're looking for. So now I'm gonna prepare my pan. That's all set to go. So what I have here is just a regular cheesecake pan, a springform pan. You have to have this, you can't just use a regular cake pan or else it's not gonna come out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line the bottom with tin foil. And we have to do this because we're going to cook this in a water bath, like that. So this is gonna be filled up with water, but we wanna prevent any kind of water from getting in this crack. Now, you can line it with tin foil as many times as you desire to try your best not to get water in, but there's still no guarantees. Sometimes there's condensation and it still gets in but there's really not much you can do about that. It's not gonna ruin the whole thing. Don't worry, it's still gonna be delicious. So what I do, I take my tin foil, I usually like to get the wider one that covers better, but they didn't have that at my grocery store. So I just put this around. And make sure when you're doing this that you're not ripping any holes in the foil. We're gonna do one more just to be extra safe. Secure it on the sides by just using your hands to press everything. So now what I'm gonna do, grease my pan. Okay, and now we're gonna add our crumbs into the pan. Now you can either use your hands or you can use a glass to do this. I start with my hand and I kind of even it out because I like it to come high on the sides Use the edge of the cup to press it up against the sides, trying to make it as even as possible. It's not the end of the world if it's not. So you can see I have it all nice and firm in the pan. It doesn't come all the way up to the sides, but it comes just close enough for me. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. I like the rustic look because it means I don't have to try very hard. So just so that it's easier to put in the oven, I'm just gonna put it in this little pan that I'm going to put the water bath in. And we're gonna stick this in a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes. You want this to be nice and set and pre-baked because if you don't, then it's just gonna be a soggy mess if you just add the cheesecake right to this. Just trust me. So 10 minutes in the oven, and in the meantime, we can work on the insides. So we're gonna start by mixing our sugar in with our cream cheese. So either have a hand mixer or your standing mixer ready to go. So my cream cheese is softened, and it's really, really important that it's softened and at room temperature. It'll just bake easier and it'll whip a lot easier. I'm just gonna add both my brown sugar and white sugar in, and we're gonna cream this together. So now what we're gonna do is kinda swap our bowls over, and I'm going to mix everything else into the pumpkin puree, only because it's easier on the mixing instead of doing it in that smaller bowl. So in my pumpkin puree, I'm gonna add my eggs and egg yolks, my vanilla extract. I'm using vanilla bean paste, but use regular vanilla extract if that's what you have my pumpkin spice and a little bit of salt and my all-purpose flour. You can use the same mixer for that because we're just gonna combine everything at the end anyway. Now all we're gonna do in our cream cheese and sugar mixture, we're gonna add all of the pumpkin puree mixture. And all you gotta do is combine this together. So once you're sure that all the lumps are out, you're ready to put it in your pie crust. 
Now mine just came out of the oven, so it's ready to go. We're just gonna dump this in. Oh yeah. Smooth the top out. I kinda like to give it a little wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the oven, and my oven is still at 350 degrees, so you have to lower that to 325 because that's part of the trick to not getting any cracks in your cheesecake. I'm also gonna show you another trick as to how you cannot get cracks in your cheesecake, but it's still no guarantee. And at the end of the day, if you get a crack in your cheesecake, it's not the end of the world. It's just not. So, and if you do get a crack in your cheesecake, just put some whipped cream on top and no one will ever know. But if you can try your best not to get a crack, then do it. So I'm gonna take this over to the oven and I'm gonna show you what I do exactly. So here we go. Ugh, it's heavy. So the easiest way that I found to do it was putting the cheesecake right into the oven and then I just pull out that rack just a little bit, that way it's easier to pour the water in. And then I just add boiling hot water to the pan and it fills it up almost about halfway, if not more than halfway, but try not to overfill it and try not to spill it like I did. Once you have all the water in, you can go ahead and set your timer for an hour and a half and that's usually when I start checking it. So the trick to not getting any cracks in your cheesecake is by using a thermometer to test the internal temperature. So I bake it until it reaches about 155 degrees. So once it reaches 155 degrees, what I do is turn the oven off but I keep the door closed and I leave it that way for an additional 10 minutes. So I set my timer for 10 minutes and then once that's done, I crack open the oven door and let it cool completely. Before you let it cool completely, make sure you run a knife along the edges so that it doesn't stick to the sides. And then once it's cooled completely, you can stick it in the refrigerator overnight and you're gonna have a delicious cheesecake to look forward to the next day. So as you can see, it is beautiful and I am so pumped to put this in my mouth. Moment of truth. My gosh. So if you guys want to remake this recipe, just look below in the description box and I'll have all the measurements as well as the written instructions. Also, if you did like this video, don't forget to smack that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, please don't forget to subscribe because I have many more recipes to come. And I'd just like to take a real quick second to thank all you guys. I just hit 500 subscribers, which is insane to me. I just can't even believe it. Um, so with that being said, I'd kind of like to get to know where you guys are from and who you are, what you like. So if you'd like to, um, comment below where you're from. I'd really like to hear from you guys. And if you have any suggestions for something you'd like to see, just let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Oh.